the metronome, used to help musicians keep time when playing music. This item, which I believe to be an early 1950s model, was sold by a German company called SX. The only information I could find is that it was a small company that probably purchased stock from the much larger French brand, Parquet, and then made small improvements before rebranding the items as their own. It appears that a lot of information, like the build date, would have been on a label printed and attached to the bottom door, which is missing in this case. My main points of reference for its age are the etched front badge and the simple wooden turned feet. The mechanism looks fairly simple, however due to this being a timing instrument, I'll have to be careful not to damage or remove too much material from any metal surfaces, as this could affect the overall accuracy. Luckily, this model has a grub screw that allows for some fine tuning of the timing. One change I will make will be to slightly bend this hook when it is reinstalled to stop it scratching a circle into the new finish. The finish is in terrible condition, so knowing that, I'm not being super careful when I'm removing some of these outside pieces, therefore you'll see that the screwdriver I'm using is actually making some slight indentations, but only in the finish. Here you can see how the finish gets damaged, especially when trying to remove these escutcheons on the outside of the body. Strangely enough, this grub screw has been threaded directly into the timber. This secondary movable weight controls how fast the pendulum oscillates back and forth. The latch shown here will not be reinstalled at the end of the job as I don't plan to put a door back on this. The mechanism itself comprises of a dual weighted pendulum that is boosted with a mainspring and an escapement, like those found in automatic watches. As the pendulum swings, the escapement gives it a little push from the kinetic energy that is stored within the mainspring. As you can see, if the pendulum is moved far enough, all the energy in the mainspring is released in one go. A lot of these components and brackets are made from brass, which is easy to get a high polish on. The problem is that unless coated with a clear coat or regularly polished, they will tarnish again within a year or so. I'm testing here to confirm my suspicion that the finish used on this was shellac. Shellac will become soft when denatured alcohol, or methylated spirits as we call it in Australia, is added to it. It is a great looking finish that dries fast and can be polished to a high gloss. Due to alcohol making it soft again, it is not a great choice for things like tabletops as spills could damage it. Shellac is considered non-toxic, finding use on things like fruit and jelly beans in the more recent past, and furniture in general for hundreds of years. Another interesting fact is that it is made during the reproductive cycle of the Asian lac beetle as a byproduct.
These letters became visible as I scraped the surface, but I have no idea what they mean. Probably a production batch. I've rubbed the surfaces with a little bit of metho to make it easier to see any remaining shellac. I found that it had soaked in quite deep in some spots, and if I kept on sanding, I'd probably start changing the ultimate shape of the product. I usually prefer to use a scraper with shellac, as you can see that it starts to clog up the sandpaper pretty quick. All these parts will be polished, but I won't go crazy removing light pitting and marks. This is an aesthetic choice, as I think it leaves some character. I will leave a light coat of polish on the surfaces, but they will deteriorate again over time. On a safety note, usually wearing gloves with some type of high speed tool such as the Dremel is not a good idea. However, you'll find that the Dremel itself is more of a high speed, low torque machine, meaning it spins really fast, but if I was to get caught in it, it'll just stop spinning. The Dremel is a great time saver for cleaning up these small parts. I start with a small, fine wire brush and then finish it with a buffing pad and a little metal polish to bring everything to a nice shine. It is important to note that the white polish that I'm using is meant to turn black. If it didn't, it would mean that the metal cannot be polished with this compound and I should stop using it straight away. The part that I am polishing and did not fully disassemble here is the mainspring casing. Inside, it contains a piece of spring steel, aka the mainspring, that is twisted via a key and stores great potential energy. They are notoriously painful to reassemble, and as it seems to twist fine, I see no reason to open it up. With stain, it is always important to check it on a small area before going to town on the whole thing. In this case, I found the stain a bit too heavy, so I dilute it with some metho, allowing more control over the final colour. I can layer it up until I am happy and am less likely to get splotches or darker areas in the final result. The whole process doesn't take long at all, and it'll get darker still when I add a clear coat at the end. When done, I give it a light rub back with some 4.0 steel wool and proceed to begin shellacking the surface in a similar style to French polishing. French polishing is very similar to what you see here, although it takes a lot longer, involved using things like pumice, and I just don't have the time and patience for that. The rubber is impregnated with a mix of shellac and methylated spirits. As I work, a light coat is deposited and dries rapidly on the surface. It will result in a high gloss finish which suits the piece. The downside is that this is around 50 coats, with at least 15 to 20 minutes between every few coats. Instead of adding it to this video, I will have another video showing how to mix the shellac to the ratio that I used for this job, as well as how I created the rubber. And with that complete, it's time for reassembly. Seems like it should be a straightforward job. You'll notice that I haven't really touched the black surfaces or the scale which indicates the speed at which the pendulum is swinging. They were in really good shape, so I didn't see the point of touching them. It's 
kind of sad knowing that all these shiny parts won't really be seen much, but I know they're there and they look great. This hook to keep the hatch closed is the final piece. So of course, I accidentally broke it. Now, instead of showing how I raged, wept, and tried to fix it, I eventually accepted that I had to make a new one. The end result came out alright, but if I find a better replacement, I'll get it swapped out. I've sped up this process as I was already nearing the end of the video. Okay, so let's try this thing again. I'm quite happy with how it came out in the end, and it'll be great to use when I practice my music. The mahogany stain with the high gloss finish is a nice contrast to the aged metal, and the only letdown is that pesky hook. The shiny brass just makes me happy to look at, and as always I'm happy knowing that this piece will be around for a while longer for other people to enjoy. As always, if you liked the video, please think about subscribing, and always leave comments below because I love reading them. Thanks for your time and we'll see you in the next video.